you're brand new to the hobby or experienced, we've all gone through green hair algae. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, green hair, hair algae is definitely one of the most defeating algaes, you know, because mm -hmm. once it takes, like, once it gets going, it's going to go quick because it spreads like wildfire and it's nasty. It's ugly. Yeah. You literally will want to look at your tank and just tear it down because it, it goes crazy. But there's ways around that. So we're going to kind of break that down here. Break down some chemical ways and even some natural ways that you can remove it. So. Yeah, for sure. So for starters, where does green hair algae come from? Like, What are we talking about? Like, so green hair from? algae really can come from anywhere. Like when you start putting corals in your tank or even live rock, any different kind of species of hair algae that are lingering in the live rock. Uh, could potentially start growing especially if you have high nutrients in your system that plays a big role in how fast your algae grows and just pretty much what it does but yeah you can get green hair algae from about anywhere and there's different species but they're most of the strains just go crazy like berserk especially when you have higher nutrients they'll take off yeah and when, when you're talking about nutrients you're talking about nitrates and phosphates yeah, Phos yeah. Uh, probably majority phosphate but they're in a relationship together so that combination you're going to grow uh green hair algae for sure Absolutely. um so whenever you're first uh setting up a tank a lot of times that's what you're gonna see as your tank progresses and it could be could also be water quality right definitely so we're not using a good water source initially or water source that's higher in phosphates you can tip that's going to fuel your green hair algae yeah so like why people recommend or experts recommend you know using roadie water mm -hmm. uh, because the tds levels are very low if not zero because yep. if you're just getting random tap water or water from like a spigot or something like you gotta understand like the elements are all over the place and different areas like you could drive down the road from my house and probably get a totally different test completely different to where like my well water would be or whatever like some right. people get higher iron some people will like have calcium problems i mean there's so many different issues and i mean if you're topping off your water with tap water that's super high in iron mm -hmm. you are going to have some major algae problems yeah and so getting that rodi unit at home or just using the roadie water is gonna uh control the phosphates gonna you're gonna have no like metals in the water so mm -hmm. zero tds is what we're looking for yes absolutely so whenever you start seeing it grow i would say you want to probably do some testing see what mm -hmm. your nutrients are check your water see if you need to do more water changes do larger water changes or start to get it out manually ahead of time yeah. but also check your lighting schedule yeah that can play a factor too just like having the light on for long periods of time I mean, algae is photosynthetic, so it will just grow. I mean, there used to be a tank at my old house that I had, and I didn't realize this because I'd fall asleep, and I don't, the light would, I thought it would go off after I slept, but one night I got home super late and that light was still on because I was always wondering why the hair algae in that tank was just crazy. Um, and I figured it out that the light was staying on all night. Uh, so I changed up the schedule and fi fixed it, and the hair algae went away pretty significantly rather quickly, especially with some water changes. Um, but yeah, I mean, just light schedules in general can help with algae. A lot of my tanks, since I'm like up really early and home later in the day, uh, I try to have them come on like midday. So when I come home, I can like enjoy them into the evening a little longer instead of like, you know, them being on in the morning. If you have the light on all the time, you're just going to start to hit algae problems. Uh, not even just hair algae, but just algae on the glass and such. So yeah, for sure. And another thing is the location of your tank too. So if you have your tank next to an open window that's receiving daylight all day long mm -hmm. or intense sunlight, you'll notice on that side of the tank that it's going to start growing algae quicker and you'll just start seeing a big mess. Definitely. And even if your tank's not next to a window, depending on what's in your water, like we've already talked about, you can start to grow green hair algae. So for example, this tank right here, uh, this was my 75 gallon and you can see just the green hair algae everywhere. And this was like my tank from like 12 years ago. But yeah, you can see that it's just taken over everything and everywhere. Yep. And it's that bright green. And what it can do is it can just grow around everything. Your corals aren't going to like it. It's going to kind of suffocate them, get in their space because it's taking over. But yeah, so it can become a problem really fast. So let's jump into, I guess, some ways to alleviate the problem. What do you do when you have green hair algae, especially if it's that bad? Yeah, so that bad, I mean, there's chemical options, but me personally, I like to, you know, try the most natural way possible, uh, which be kind of, uh, it, it stinks to do this, but removing your live rock even. 
uh, especially if it's as bad as it was in that scenario and kind of cleaning off your li live rock a little bit or uh, simply just doing constant water changes, lowering your light schedule for a period of time just to try to eradicate the algae. It'll take a long period of time, but if you keep up with your maintenance really well and uh, very faithfully, uh, your nutrients or whatever causing the issue it should stop unless you're you know adding a bunch of iron or something into your water uh, that's causing it it really just also depends on the factor if you can decide the factor that's causing uh, the algae to grow uh, that's going to make your solution uh, a lot easier to figure out so yeah definitely and I would say, uh, well, at least for me, I would ch choose the manual removal option over chemicals. And there's a few chemicals out there on the market that people are like, yeah, this is what I use. This is going to knock it out. But changing up uh, water flow, doing water changes, really getting in there and pulling it off of the rock work. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't necessarily pull my rocks out of the tank. I just went in there and was just picking it up, picking it off. So like, Day after day, that was my maintenance, and it can be tedious, and it can be a big headache, especially with that much algae, but I mean, sometimes you gotta do the hard work and get in there and start pulling it out. Yeah. And then, yeah, as what you were saying, like as you're doing water changes, you're staying on top of your parameters and you're keeping that nutrient low. If someone has a space large enough, or I guess a large enough aquarium where they have like space for a sump underneath, you can get away with having a refugium or an algae scrubber down there that's gonna be opposite light cycle, opposite schedule of what your tank is. And that's definitely gonna help. Like for me, I have a sump, so I'm growing Kato algae down there and the nutrients is helping that to grow so that in the main display, there's no other kind of green hair algae. Exactly. Scrubber. Yeah, that's, that's another good point to mention. Like uh, you don't necessarily have to have algae scrubbers to help combat that, but I mean, refugiums, just keeping yeah. like algaes in your sump growing out and stuff, that's soaking up nutrients. So if it's soaking it up down there, you're gonna have less of an issue up in your display. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when it gets like this bad right here, there's other things you can do like three day blackouts. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just turning off your lights for three days. Some people cover up the tanks completely, putting cardboard all the way around it or um, towels or whatever but pitch black for like three days. And um, I know that people are concerned about corals. I wouldn't go more than three days. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, three days, I mean, you should be totally fine. Cause I mean, if you think about it, um, over in the Indo-Pacific, they're still getting like, you know, uh, what they call typhoons, what we call hurricanes here. All yeah. which will like leave areas, you know, kind of cloudy and you know, overcast for a couple days and they don't get much of any sunlight. Yeah, so. absolutely. So yeah, just thinking about how nature affects corals in, in the wild versus your aquarium. Three days with no lights, that'll be just fine. And then that will help. You'll start seeing the green hair algae, like a little less green. If it starts like turning white and getting looser, it's dying off. So it's easier to pull off of your rock work. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of just gonna help that do that. Definitely. If you enjoyed this video, then I know you're gonna love the full podcast episode where we talk all about green hair algae. Go ahead and click or tap your screen to watch that. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I will see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk. Mm -hmm.